to today's uh, WAM seminar. Uh, so for those of you who have uh, joined for the first time, I would like to introduce a bit about this activity. So this is our extracurriculum activity that we hold uh, once per month. Uh, so this is a platform for knowledge sharing uh, across uh, water related students. And once in a while, like for example, for this particular uh, seminar, we also invited external experts to come and share of the research and uh, the industry work um, related to water or fluid dynamics uh, to share with our students. Uh, so uh, please do start. And then um, this particular uh, event will be broadcasted live and also recorded and shared on our YouTube channel. Okay, so um, from this moment, I will start to um, uh, go live on Facebook. Uh, so for those of you who are on this social media platform, uh, so please do share uh, to your timeline or YouTube professional network uh, so that this can reach out to um, a large audience. Um, also, I would like to remind that this uh, seminar will be broadcasted live and put up on our Facebook page uh, with our assistant with our Ruel uh, over here. Yes, from, from this moment, uh, the web seminar will be broadcasted live on Facebook. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Sogar Strata, uh, uh, research expert uh, from AAT Solutions um, to uh, start his presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, please, Sogar, the floor is yours. Okay, so uh, greetings to everyone, the faculty, staff, students, uh, alumni of the engineering department at the, at the AAT. So uh, I would first would like to thank Dr. Lot for inviting me to, uh, to give this presentation and Mr. Ong from AAT Solutions for uh, asking me to, to showcase my work in water engineering so far, uh, representing AAT Solutions. So uh, the topic which I'm about to discuss is the introduction of uh, computational fluid dynamics and its application in water engineering. First, uh, I would be starting off with our work at EAT Solutions, how we got into CFD, uh, the background of the work uh, which we do at EAT Solutions, and then I would be getting into uh, the other applications of uh, computational fluid dynamics. And there uh, we'll be introducing water engineering because water engineering was a few months ago was very new to me first time because I hear from the structural engineering background and our background is uh, at AAT solution is wind engineering. And from there, we would be trying to understand some uh, theories of uh, CFD. And then um, I would be showing some worked out trials which I've carried out. So uh, I will start my uh, slides now. So at AD Solutions, we conduct uh, wind engineering consultancy services uh, for buildings and bridges. We also do the statistical climate analysis of um, the project location uh, to, to bring out the, uh, the most critical wind speeds. And for the buildings, we uh, we, we normally do wind tunnel testing for the structural wind loads, cladding pressure, pedestrian comfort study. We also conduct uh, the test on the bridge sections for the stability and the uh, static, static forces. So the wind tunnel which we use is a combined uh, facility of EIT and Thammasat University, which is located uh, in Thammasat University. So uh, this is uh, the work what we do at AT Solutions, which is related to wind engineering. So this is where uh, CFD also comes into play. We started, I think, a year back with uh, the CFD models. So what our intention was, was we would replicate the wind tunnel models to CFD models. So having done this, we would be helping uh, our wind tunnel testing because the wind tunnel testing is quite rigorous. It requires model making. We have to build the physical model itself. And that physical model has to be 3D printed. 
And after that, we have to make adjustments for the pressure taps and we have to handle all the uh, equipments in the wind tunnel for the measurement. So it makes it quite uh, time consuming. So to supplement it, we would use CFD so that we can optimize the uh, wind tunnel testing itself. Uh, we have been using CFD uh, for the building projects, like I already mentioned the same kind of building projects which we would use for uh, the cladding pressure, overall wind loads, the, and the uh, pedestrian wind comfort study. These are some uh, like uh, pictures of the, the CFD models. Uh, which we have done at the solutions. And some interesting other than buildings, the other kind of projects uh, are, this is one project from the Philippines, an island project. So the plant wanted uh, to assess the effect of wind on a resort which is located near to the beach. Uh, here, uh, we conducted the wind climate study and the pedestrian wind comfort study to locate the probable areas which would be critical from wind. So we uh, we did a CFD run. We did a CFD run for this project, and then we figured out uh, which part would be critical and which part would not be critical in that particular location. And we also have it validated from our wind tunnel results, the the results from CFD. And the other uh, project which we did was uh, this is also in Philippines. So this was for natural comfort and thermal comfort. That's right, natural ventilation and thermal comfort. So here the client has uh, put in uh, an opening, three floor opening on the lobbies at, uh, at different intervals of the building. And here we need to uh, assess whether there is adequate natural ventilation and the occupants have thermal comfort inside. So we did CFD runs this as well for the particular location uh, where I've shown the mesh on the bottom right, right hand side. And from here, we can actually point out uh, like the singular location of, the, of each and every point uh, inside the domain where uh, there would be adequate air for natural ventilation and thermal comfort. For this, we use the ASHRAE guidelines uh, to, to do this assessment. So now uh, about CFD, those were our applications which we do at AD Solutions. Those are mo mostly concentrated towards structural engineering and wind engineering on buildings and bridges. Uh, so uh, there are other applications also, like uh, recently I found uh, a few studies and I think that there has been a substantial few which has looked at the uh, applications of CFD in COVID-19 applications. So um, because uh, the, the disease itself is transmit, transmitted over the air, uh, so CFD can uh, actually be used to uh, see the effect of um, using masks, using face shields and all these things. This is quite interesting, actually. And there are other applications of CFD as well like aeronautics, vehicles, ports. Uh, from these things, we understand that it is, it, it's quite robust. And there are other applications like power generation for renewals, biomedical engineering, and chemical process. I would not be talking so much about it. I would uh, straight, uh, would like to go into the topic of discussion, which is uh, water engineering. So this is just to show the other applications. So there might be some applications which I have missed, but all in all, uh, CFD would be used everywhere where there is fluid flow. And for fluid, it doesn't only have to be water or air, it can be any, any form of fluid. So uh, all these flow problems, what we uh, are talking about is, uh, is encompassed under a subject, which is fluid dynamics, which describes the flow of fluids. And uh, the, the, the kind of flow which we deal with at EAD Solutions, especially with wind engineering, is uh, the flow of air, which is aerodynamics. And the ones which you would be interested in, uh, like uh, uh, for water engineering is hydrodynamics. So all the principles is, uh, is, is the same, I would understand. 
and the the major difference would be the fluid the fluid particle itself in aerodynamics it's air and in hydrodynamics it's water so due to this the the properties of um, the fluid would change and due to those properties like the critical properties here would be uh, the density and the viscosity and due to this the the flow regime uh, around the structure or on a free, uh, on a free surface is going to change so reynolds number is one indicator which uh, would would give us an indication of whether the flow is laminar or turbulent we can see the dependence of the density and the viscosity and uh, using the formula which is given in the screen we can find out the type of the flow regime. So this would be the basic difference. And in water engineering, so uh, the applications would be substantial, like there is open flows, laboratory experiments to, exp uh, to replicate the uh, cases in the re real life scenario. There is uh, rivers, there is uh, water treatments, irrigation, flooding, uh, glacier mills. So it could be a lot. And uh, the, the application of CFD is, is widely being used right now in, in water engineering for this tsunami case, uh, for this, uh, the apple top shaft, which we are also trying to replicate uh, with the coordination with uh, Dr. Locke and Mr. Roa. Uh, so for component design of a hydropower project or any any kind of project which relates to the uh, to the water flow, spillway design, river engineering, and then uh, the wastewater treatment plants. And this is another representative example of uh, a, a sewage system. So maybe now we can understand looking at these animations that. Uh, this, the applications of CFD in water engineering is substantial, and it's being widely being used by uh, different research groups, uh, being uh, researched by different research groups, and it's being applied in industry as well for uh, the purposes of design and decision making. So this was the uh, this was the background in CFD in water engineering, like looking at some of the applications. Okay, now I would like to, that was like the um, background of CFD and its application. Now I would like to go into some of the applications of uh, the, no, sorry, some of the theory of the, uh, of the CFD. So what CFD is doing, like I already mentioned, it's solving uh, fluid dynamic problems. And the fluid dynamic problems can be solved uh, experimentally, uh, uh, analytically, or numerically. Experimentally, uh, we have our hydraulic labs, which can solve these problems, uh, wind tunnels for our matter, with uh, wind engineering. But these, uh, these labs, the models to construct there are very, very uh, time consuming and would rather be expensive. So instead, uh, there would be analytical methods, but then again, with analytical methods, we have more uh, variables than we have equations. So it, it becomes an indeterminate solution. Uh, and numerical methods is, uh, is when it comes to play now because the two methods, uh, this would be better than the two methods in, in many respects. So here with computational fluid dynamics, we are trying to solve the Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, the equation here is uh, the shown in the screen is the Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, the, these equations are derived from the conservation of mass and conservation of momentum. And this is a discretized process where we uh, discretize the, the domain of flow uh, into, uh, finite, into finite elements so that we can monitor the, the fluid flow inside each and every discretized element. Uh, in, okay, I'll talk about that in a while. 
So this is the formula and all in all, uh, this looks quite complicated, but all in all, what we are trying to do from here is we are trying to uh, derive the velocity and the field parameters. Sorry, velocity, para uh, velocity parameters and the field, para uh, sorry, pressure parameters from the Navier-Stokes equation. <laughs> the word sometimes gets <laughs> jumbled in my mouth. Okay, regardless, um, moving forward. Uh, so uh, uh, while doing the discretization, if we consider the geometry on the left-hand side, uh, if, if that is the solid geometry, the fluid flow would be on the surface of that. So we need to create a domain. The domain plus the geometry on, is on the middle and the fluid domain is on the right hand side and that is where we would apply our navier stokes equation we would be conducting our cfd analysis and the method to solve the navier stokes equation is this is a purely mathematical method for discretization uh, we have the finite volume finite element and finite differences uh, the ones which we uh, use in cfd packages is the finite volume method finite Element and finite volume method, uh, the there is a there is a difference, but it both can uh, both can capture the most complicated geometries, but finite differences uh, will not be able to capture geometries. It will be a cuboid, and and then it it can only capture like uh, some shapes, which is. Uh, which is which can be filled by a cuboid but there will be substantial space space loss while doing the finite differences but to understand finite differences would be the most uh, simple one and in most of uh, fem uh, sorry cfd codes we use finite volume because it's also like uh, the first code which was developed was developed in uh, finite volume method and thereafter all the development which has data happened has been based upon that primary code. And finite element method for uh, civil engineers, I think everybody is very familiar to this because it is used for structural design. Uh, okay. And uh, just as a disclaimer, finite element method can also be used to be solving CFD problems. Okay, now, okay, now, yes. This is where th there is a major difference between uh, the uh, wind analysis and the analysis in water. Here, uh, in water, we have to consider the multi-phase um, models. Multi-phase in, uh, in wind, it's only air, so it's only one phase. Here, we have to consider the, uh, the interaction of air and water. So we can use either Eulerian Eulerian model for this or Eulerian Lagrangian model. The difference between Eulerian and Lagrangian uh, is the uh, is depicted on the picture on the left uh, hand side top. Uh, the Eulerian space, the it is just like focusing a frame. And inside the frame, the properties of each discretized element is going to change. And the Lagrangian space, uh, here, what we are doing is uh, the, the frame itself is changing. So the properties inside the domain will remain the same, but the relative size of the frame would be changing. So we can use either. So first, only talking about the Eulerian, Eulerian model. Uh, here is a brief example. See, we see that the properties inside the mesh is changing. This is just an uh, example of fluid flow, which is driven by the kinetic energy and the acceleration due to gravity. And uh, with the Navier-Stokes equation, we had the pressure fields and the velocity fields, which we could derive. So we have to use one more model, one more equation to uh, define whether it is water or air. So we use the volume of fluids method, which adds one more transport equation uh, to the already existing Navier-Stokes equation, and we find the alpha parameter. If alpha parameter is close to one, it's water. If it's close to zero, uh, it's air. So this is the models which we can use. There is another model, which is the mixture model, which is slightly more complicated. There we solve the transport equations uh, separately for air and water. And uh, there we 
uh, use the, inter uh, the interaction surface uh, to model. And the interaction is modeled, modeled as surface uh, shear. And this is the Eulerian Lagrangian model, which uh, we can see here, the, the space, the meshing, as the object moves, changes. So this is a more uh, optimized method. So wherever there is like uh, turbulence, then we can change this, the, the size of the mesh in those areas only. Uh, many research has shown that Eulerian Lagrangian model is rather a more efficient way of analyzing uh, the fluid flow. And now uh, those were the equations. Now I just want to give a brief insight of the flow of work, how the CFP um, code would be running. First, like I already mentioned, we would be creating a geometry and uh, and we would be meshing it. To the geometry, we'll be adding uh, the input conditions, boundary conditions, which are the most important to close the solution, and the input, input uh, flow parameters. Uh, so these analysis, the primary uh, would be these input conditions. And from there, we would uh, solve the Navier-Stokes equation for the flow parameters. and the, and after we solve it, we get uh, the parameters for the particular time step, and we check for convergence. Convergence is from the previous times, uh, from the previous iteration to the current iteration. We check it. If it converges, we have to give a certain criteria. Uh, ideally, the the convergence, uh, the limiting value needs to be zero, but we know that it's not possible practically. So we have to specify it to a very very small number, which is acceptable to us. And if it converges, we move on to the next time step. We update the time step with the updated flow parameters, and then we, uh, we start the next time step. Uh, if it's not converged, then we uh, iterate it again, and then uh, we continue the process till we have convergence and move to the next time step. So, uh, and uh, again, with more iterations, we'll have uh, the the error reduced, like which is visible, I think, on your screen as well on the graph. Okay, so that was the workflow. And now getting into some uh, real life considerations, like the fluid flow is either laminar or turbulent, and in most cases, uh, the problem is created by turbulence, and so in all engineering applications, we are we would be more concentrated and more uh, be interested to see the turbulent uh, flow. So, and turbulence is a big problem. Even that is one reason uh, it is very difficult to capture it analytically. The turbulence. So uh, the Navier-Stokes equation is powerful enough. Uh, is is it's powerful enough to uh, to capture the turbulence, but it's very very nonlinear as well. So it has a great tendency to diverge. To avoid this concern, what we can do to capture turbulence is is mesh the 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 space to a very very small discretized element, and the time step also would be very very small. So this would incur a, a substantial computational cost. This is going to be computationally very, computationally very, very heavy. This particular method to capture turbulence by meshing the, the, uh, the, the domain to a very small uh, element is, is called the direct numer numerical simulation. This is a very, very fine kind of simulation which requires even days for supercomputers to run. So this is like the benchmark. If validation for validation, if we do not have um, if you do not have uh, like a, an experimental method in research, uh, they use this DNS method, direct numerical simulation. Uh, it might not be even practical with uh, the, the computational speed which uh, a normal computer has. So the solution for this is eddy viscosity models. Here, we do not have to mesh the 
the domain to uh, very, very small elements here, the turbulence is modeled as viscosity. So more turbulence means more resistance to flow. That is the, uh, that is the idea behind it. And there are several kinds of turbulence models which we, which we can use, k omega, uh, k epsilon, uh, yes, sparta samaras. It, it, these are all the mathematical formulations. And here, along with the Navier-Stokes equation, we add uh, the energy equations using the Bosnisk hypothesis to, to calculate the, uh, the turbulence, the eddy viscosity uh, in the in a particular domain. And uh, the interesting part is that with this energy equations, we can also formulate uh, a temperature equations which we, we can readily use for our fluid domain, like for air, for wind. We, uh, we, so from now uh, till now, we know that we can use CFD for wind and uh, water multiphase. But with these additions of equations, we can also use for temperature. So uh, the, the eddy viscosity models, the turbulence models, which are conventionally used uh, in the industry and in research is LES and RANS. And the other methods are like, an, like a hybrid of both. So just to showcase a video, the difference between DNS, direct numerical simulation, the most extreme one, and LES is, we can see here, DNS can, give a very, very fine resolution of the eddies which are, uh, which are formed. And LES gives a rather uh, less uh, account of the eddies. So that is the major difference. And if we can see the flow around the car, the difference between LES and RANS is LES would give a, is a, would give a rather more detailed account of the eddies, the turbulence, and RANS would give rather the average. The full form of LES is large eddy simulation and RANS is Reynolds average Navier-Stokes uh, formulations. And these are uh, the ones which we have been using, which I have also used to uh, formulate the examples. Uh, and basing upon the need, we need to, uh, we need to you know, choose the particular turbulence model which we want to solve for. Like if you want fluctuate, uh, fluctuations of the flow, uh, flow, then we use LES. If we just want the average, we would use the RANS because RANS is, uh, the computational cost is very less. Uh, and LES, the, the computational cost is uh, very, very high. So basing upon this, we, we would have to carefully choose the type, type of turbulence models. And uh, for, the solution turbulence model, the Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, briefly about the wall treatment as well. So these are readily um, these are readily um, available in forms of commercial packages like ANSYS. Uh, Flow three D is the one which is widely used for water engineering. And the, but the ones which we use is open form. The reason why we do this is because it's an open source. I always feel open source is better. Uh, first reason, because it's free. And uh, open source also gives us the source code. So if there is any tweaks, then uh, we can have, have that made. And uh, since it gives us the source code, then for research purposes, we can even go back and look at what is happening for our better understanding. And all these methods use finite volume uh, approximation. And there is ComSol, uh, which is from my understanding, it's one of the very few commercial packages which use finite element modeling. Okay, and okay. So that was some parts. Uh, of the turbulence modeling, which we covered now, just talking about the wall treatment plant. So around the wall, the flow around the wall, there is a boundary layer created. So the boundary layer created is, created is marked by turbulence region, buffer region, and the laminar region. So to capture this, the, the meshing has to be very fine about, uh, about that area, especially the turbulent part. 
So uh, this increases the computational cost because all around the walls, we would have to uh, add a lot of cells. Instead of that, uh, we use the, the wall treatment where we, we can just define uh, one particular element, one particular cell there, and it will capture the, the, uh, the boundary layer. The way it does it is, uh, it says that for all of uh, the boundary layer, the profile would be very similar depending upon the, uh, the roughness of the surface. So we could model, let's say a smooth surface, a rough surface, any kind of surfaces with the wall treatment. And we do not, we would not have to account, uh, we would not have to give so many cells. So this is the idea. Uh, it, it is uh, actually more complicated than what I say, but the use is exactly this. There are certain criteria which needs to be met while doing this. There has to be uh, the, 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 the distance between the cell and the wall has to be within a certain limit. But um, having done this, we will, we will be saving a lot of computational time. Okay, so uh, I think after this, we would have the, uh, we will be discussing boundary condition and initial conditions. And after this, we'll have, we, I'll be explaining the errors and validation. And I think that would be the end of the theoretical part. And then we will be going to the, uh, the trials which I've carried out. So uh, now discussing about the boundary conditions. Boundary conditions are very, very important uh, to, to consider because this is what, uh, this is how we can control the, uh, the solution and the input conditions as well. So the boundary conditions here would be the inlet on the top, the outlet and the gravity. This is just the same example which I showed earlier for the fluid flow. This is a 2D condition, number of cells is 40,000 and the turbulent model is LES. Uh, so these are, so depending upon the case, we would have like slip condition where we would allow, because the domain can, cannot be infinite. It has to, we have to stop the domain somewhere, it has to end somewhere. So we define slip just to assume that uh, there is something beside that particular cell also, which we are not modeling. There would be symmetry conditions, there would be uh, empty conditions for 2D cases. So there is quite a lot. Uh, so we need to have an uh, intuitive idea of what these boundary conditions would do and the uh, uh, initial conditions as well, uh, which is uh, the velocity and the direction of gravity for this particular case. And using this, uh, we would be doing all these things and the post-processing, which I mentioned earlier, is another thing. So from the CFD, the, for the solver, we use um, uh, open form. And then for the post-processing and the visualization, we use uh, another open source software, which is uh, Paraview. Paraview, is, it, it, it comes in tandem. Uh, so post-processing, we can evaluate like the basic flow para parameters like velocity, pressure, turbulent kinetic energy, since we are using a turbulent model, turbulent viscosity, uh, the air and water in that particular domain, all these things. And then if there are other derived parameters basing upon these parameters or like some parameters which I might have missed here, uh, we can also have that uh, calculated. And like the, the similar way we carry out post-processing for our wind engineering, uh, we can uh, do the same process. Like if there is uh, a velocity at a certain point which needs to be found out, we can put probes, uh, like uh, measurement locations in the CFD code as well, and then find out the particular uh, velocity at that particular point. Likewise, we can do it for any parameter. And for discharge and all these things also, we can use the, the derivative of all these things to, to calculate the required parameter, which uh, where we want to reach to. So, uh, Yes. So errors and uncertainty. So since I, I told you, uh, CFD is just uh, a numerical method. It is not the exact solution. So there will still be an error. So these errors could be due to various reasons. 
physical approximation error. Phys physical approximation error would be uh, if we have assumed anything incorrectly, the boundary conditions, the uh, the the input conditions, and the uh, computer round off error because we use these numbers. We, there is a lot of floating point floating points. So depending upon the bit of the computer, like 62, uh, 32 bit or 64 bit, it depends, like 64 bits would be more accurate where we would have less of computer round off error. Iterative convergence, if we have set the uh, convergence limit uh, very, very high, if it's not low enough, then we will have this iterative convergence error. Computer programming error, since we are using commercial softwares, I don't think there should be a problem, unless like if, if you go into open form and tweak it in such a way that there would be errors. Uh, usage error, it depends upon the user. And discretization error is the most critical one. And now the, the discretization error, we have to really consider uh, what it's actually doing. Because here we have the stability condition also to satisfy whether the, uh, the solution is stable or not. Because like I said, the Navier-Stokes equation is naturally a very, very uh, nonlinear uh, equation. So here we really have to consider the mesh size, the time stepping, like the type of meshes that we use and all these things. This would be another subject altogether, the, you know, just about the discretization error. And we have to uh, consider all these things uh, for the CFT solution, all right? So all the results, what we attain from the computational fluid dynamics analysis, yes, it, we have different contours, we have animations, and it is also readily available. We can have it done and we can save a lot of uh, experimentation time, computation time, like all these things. But we really have to, go out and validate these results to, uh, to really trust the results what we get from CFE. So we would have to calibrate it and uh, test it with the lab test or the real time values. Okay, so that was the theoretical part. I would just be talking about some of the simulations which I uh, have carried out. So the first one was just a simple one. Uh, this was at the very beginning when I started CFD, almost around two years uh, prior. Uh, this is a stationary wall. These are the boundary conditions which I'm setting out. And there is an inlet. And then there is a pressure outlet. This is the stationary wall. And the, the gray part is the fluid domain, which we, and we can see here due to the flow we can uh, see the fluid creating vortices. And these are such some uh, natural phenomena which we can observe from uh, a, a particular bluff body. I actually did it for aerodynamic purposes, but if we even pass water through it, if the, there is required Reynolds number to induce the vortices, then we would be able to still see this for, uh, the flow of water as well. Okay, so now the next one uh, was uh, given to me by Mr. Roa from uh, the hydraulics lab. So over here, I'm trying to model the spillway, the RCC closure structure. And this is just some preliminary animation of that closure structure for a 2D analysis. So I, I do not have, I've not, uh, I've not done any kind of uh, direct comparison with any form of result. Uh, so far, I just have this animation to show, but very soon probably we'll be doing some more projects and then we will have some uh, real data and CFD data to compare to see the validity of uh, the results shown by CFD. And this is another one. The, the first one was without scouring. And this one, I've just uh, moved it a little bit. I've not modeled the, the three phase. The three phase would here be the air, water, and then the, the surface of scour, which, is, uh, which would be scouring. 
So I've not done this as of now. I just moved the solid objects a bit wider so that we could see a flow field, something similar. And, uh, so this analysis is an LES uh, simulation. So I think here we can see visually some similarities between the flow in the lab and the flow uh, of CFD. And these are some other examples. Uh, this is a mo model where the water is flowing. Uh, this is a 3D model. Water is flowing from the top uh, with one meter per second, and it's the water is flowing from, uh, due to the potential and the kinetic energy. See this again. And uh, just about the 3D modeling, 3D modeling is relatively very, very time consuming than 2D modeling, especially for LES models. For RANS models, it's, it's relatively, the time consumed is, uh, is, is very, very less. And here, the water is allowed to pass through the output. This is one case. And here, the, the blue thing, what we see is just water. It's allowed to pass. And the, this is case three, which I have shown. And here, uh, instead, the, the both cases are very similar, but instead, the, the outlet is sealed here. So the water is allowed to collect. And the, uh, the colors, what we see is the velocity magnitude for the collecting water. And this is just an approximation of like the model here is our wind tunnel model. We, uh, this was the first kind of simulation which I tried out to see whether we can uh, simulate uh, the propagation of the, the water at a, a certain level. And if you see, uh, we were able to do this. Uh, for this, we had to use the, the RANS model because Elias model was taking substantially long time. So I do not know as of now you know, how much of accuracy we would require, whether we would require the Elias model or the RANS model. So depending upon the need, we, we can have it changed. And now I, that was a very unrealistic guess. Water is not going to be so high. So this one, the water is relatively lower. I think this is about... Uh, three meters from the ground. Three meters from the ground. Right. Yeah, and we can see in a local area how the water would be propagating if it's coming from a particular area. And this is here we can see uh, the same kind of animation, but a, with a different view, where there would be that the fast infiltration and slow infiltration of water. Uh, and uh, the, the work, I think, uh, of our wind tunnel team, what we do at AD Solutions would be very similar to the work which can be done for all these flood modeling and all, because uh, similarly, we get the data for the wind tunnel to build the wind tunnel models from the RSGIS packages, and we uh, prepare the 3D models out of it. And from the RSGIS packages, we can also have the elevation. So a, a local area can be modeled of, uh, for our 3D models. And then we extract the geometry to the CFD packages. And uh, from the CFD pa packages, uh, we prepare the model and get the boundary conditions, input conditions, uh, and all these things. The turbulence models as per required, we run the model, and then we can post-process the data for all the various parameters we would require. So uh, that was it. I have uh, uh, given a brief uh, presentation of the, of the theories and the work which we have done so far in water engineering. We would uh, be expecting more uh, of these kind of works to be done in the future. So uh, all in all, I would just like to conclude by saying a few, uh, few points. It is applicable to all domains of water engineering, which is related to flow of water. And I think um, by the animations and the examples which I showed, it's very clear. And this can be used for disaster prediction and preparedness. Uh, since we can model floods and like, I don't know, other kind of calamities which is related to water tsunamis, I would assume would be another one. And we can be better prepared for these disasters. 
So currently, now we are using it as, and in the market also, in, in the industry and research, it's being used as a supplementary, uh, supplementary tool to experimental testing. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that it's going to replace it in the near future with the, the kind of uh, development that it's making. Uh, so it's going to soon replace it. And uh, so it's going to be a decision-making tool in the future. And the other thing which uh, I've, it's occurred to me is that coupled with other parameters, like uh, we at AAT Solutions, we do it for wind, and there, there are temperature equations which can be modeled by CFD. It can give a holistic view of the environment with water, wind, temperature, and all these things. And there could be other things which I have missed out, but uh, here, when we incorporate all these things, then uh, we would have a holistic view of that uh, particular scenario. So by seeing this, I would like to conclude the presentation. I will be sharing the slides and all the references can be found here. All the references which I use to formulate uh, the, the CFD and the, the videos and all these things, the source of videos. So thank you. I would like to uh, invite Dr. Log to yeah, so um, thank, thank you, Mr. Sogat. Actually, this is quite very eye-opening. You know, like, I believe all of these are very good. So before we move on to the uh, Q&A session, uh, we will have a photo session. So uh, Mr. Roel, uh, on your mark, please. Okay, so good morning to everyone. Uh, can you please uh, remove first the, the slides? Because I cannot show all the gallery. Uh oh, oh. Yeah, I... can, can can you stop uh, stop share? Uh, just 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 for, for a moment. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to figure this out. Okay. I see that. Okay, yes. Okay. Thank you. So, kindly turn on your camera. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, for, uh, wait for a while for another student. Okay, so in count of three, everybody? Okay, count of three. So one, smile, two, and three. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Yeah, uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Royal, for being reliable as always for our photographer. <laughs> so thank you very much. So before we move on, so may I invite uh, Professor Sangam to have some a bit of a remark, because this is quite uh, something quite interesting uh, as wonderful for us. Please, Professor Sangam. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lok and uh, Saugat. That's a very, very uh, impressive presentation. Um, I saw a lot of applications in uh, water engineering and management uh, program also. So I think uh, our students will also be benefited uh, if we can collaborate together. As, as you have rightly mentioned that there are several, several applications of CFD in uh, <clears throat> water engineering, right? So probably in the future, we can collaborate with each other. Maybe uh, we can you know, develop some thesis topic for masters and PhD students. At the same time, we can also develop some proposal to submit to some other uh, donor agency. Yeah? So thank you very much for that. I think uh, our students will be very interested to have this question and answer session. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Law. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I think, thank you, Professor Sangam, for, for encouraging us. And uh, yeah, I, I do believe that uh, this open, uh, I would say that multiple new horizons, uh, you know, not only for on research, industry outreach, but also collaborations for uh, our students as well. Uh, so just for your information, uh, uh, Professor Sangam, actually, uh, uh, Kasun, one of our master students, is already collaborating with the Sangha to learn about CFD. So uh, our other students are more than welcome you know, to explore these opportunities for the thesis as well. So uh, with that, I would like to open the floors uh, for Q&A session. So those who have questions for uh, Mr. Sogat, please unmute yourself um, and ask questions uh, directly. Thank you. So any questions for Mr. Sagar, please? 
Oh, hi, uh, if I can start. Uh, yes, 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 please. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, uh, Mr. Sugat. Uh, I guess I get your name correctly. Uh, <laughs> yes, I just no uh, have a quick question on the uh, computational effort. You mentioned uh, uh, you mentioned about having a supercomputer would help your work. Uh, I wonder if you can you know quantify how much that will improve your speed of the speed of your simulation. So uh, the the uh, computation which I carried out the animation which I showed is done in uh, a four. Uh, four core eight processor computer. So that took about uh, for one animation, so, so one video which I did, which was like the enclosure thing, so what is being collected, that took about uh, two days. So with a supercomputer, we can have that done in a few hours or one or 30 minutes. I do not know that. So because with, I think, number of processors, we, we would be decreasing the speed. So I agree. Thank you. It would be substantially less the time required. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Connect, for, for a very uh, interesting question. Actually, I was thinking about the same thing, Connect. You know, uh, when we do the uh, old school models, right? I think it takes less time compared to if you can imagine the computational domain with the CFD. Um, so thank you, Connect. So just um, let, let, let me ask uh, just one quick question to Sogat. Um, usually for our water models, for example, when you uh, when we model the river, right, we rely on uh, water levels or discharge to calibrate uh, our model. So if by the look of your CFD model, uh, I think it's quite, you know, uh, interesting and quite realistic. So let's take one example that you are modeling a uh, water that getting submerged through a weir, right? That one is a weir that you got from our lab. So how do you think you will calibrate that model? Or validate actually, let's say. Uh, so for this, we would require the uh, the inlet conditions. What kind of okay. inlet are we pro providing? If it's lab control, then we can use the same inlet condition as that used in the lab. And then uh, I, I also went through the presentation. We have used uh, control points. Mm. Okay. And we can measure the, the flow at these points, and we can have it compared with the experimental results. So in a way, you are making streamlines, right? You're making streamlines from the real model, and then you're comparing the streamlines uh, generated by the CFD. Yes, and then the another would be the what uh, the head as well. We can, I think, compare that as well. Yeah, yeah, the streamlines, you know, like the, the, the traveling path of the particles, and then also the the head from maybe upstream and downstream side. Yes, yes. Actually, it's quite interesting because uh, last semester I was teaching about hydrodynamics. Some of my students here are actually taking that course, like Miss May. Uh, Miss May, uh, are you available, Miss May? Uh, hello, Mr. Chamaka, are you still there? Yes, 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 I'm uh, here. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so as, as you recall, right, I think we, we study about the hydrodynamics, right? So, uh, how, how do you think this computational uh, hydrodynamics can help uh, in, in, in uh, the studying sorry. of that course? Uh, so uh, this will be the, uh, this will represent the actual conditions of uh, actual condition in the real life. And uh, what we learn in the fluid dynamic and uh, what we, uh, what Mr. Suga discussed about uh, discussed in this presentation, when we match with each other, we can produce more realistic model, which will which will help to uh, produce the actual uh, model, uh, which will be more useful and also affected in real life. I think so. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank, I think thank you, Miss May. Yes, yes, it was a very, uh, you know, like when I, I teach the hydrodynamics, so that just to share. So it was, uh, you know, the, 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 the equations you show on the slide, actually we discussed during the lectures, but it would be very good if you can, you know, show this during the lectures. So I think we can explore some uh, guest lecture uh, next semester. I see that Dr. Tan raised his hand. Please, Dr. Tan. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lok. So thank you so much. I think very informative sharing. So I, I, 
I just have one question. I know that this very first trial on the some like a flood prediction in I see this some kind of the, like an urban area. So I I don't know uh, in in your model if you want to add some points of like uh, the pump to release the water because like uh, during the flood time if like uh, the the city they want to pump out water in some point I, I don't know it can be added in your model. Uh, yes, Dr. Tuan, yes, we can exactly do that. Like the input conditions, we can have those inputs as well in the model so that it's constantly uh, generating water from that particular source, some kind of like a source term. Okay. So, yeah, I think it's very nice because uh, the flat urban, I mean, the timing is in a short duration and maybe they have some action. So, if we know that's weak point, like uh, optimize the point for for maybe release the water out or they prepare some uh, location for uh, store water. So it would be nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, I would like to add uh, to that Dr. Tun as well. Actually, in, your, in that case, uh, so that may be not a source, but we add a sink because we are taking our water from, from the system, right? You're pumping, pumping water out Oh, because your, oh, your, your, oh, your yeah. urban area is getting flooded, so it's not a source. Source means you're adding more water. <laughs> Which I Inside, think, yeah. yes, it's a sink, it's a sink in a way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, like an outlet. Yes, 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 yes. yes. But the water is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a very interesting point. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you a lot of time. Uh, okay, I think we have uh, two minutes left. So um, anyone have uh, one quick question for uh, Mrs. Sangha? Uh, yes, Professor Sangha, please, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Locke. Um, I think uh, I'm just wondering whether this uh, CFD techniques can be used to uh, assess the multi-hazards impact, for example. I think uh, from your examples, we can see that uh, it can be applied for the flood simulation, right? And that's quite uh, straightforward, I have learned. Uh, what about other hazards? Because, for example, in one city, probably it's not only the floods, probably there are some other other hazards like uh, you know landslides or you know seawater intrusion right so is it possible to uh, apply this cfd uh, techniques uh, for the multiple hazard assessment in a city scale or in you know the the, the water set or basin scale yeah uh, yes yes uh, professor sangam uh, i think it would be able to be applied there as well because here we are looking at flooding and seawater intrusions would also be something similar to that, where water is being uh, uh, is infiltrated out of a particular direction, if I'm not incorrect. And then right, right, yeah, my, yeah. My my uh, you know query is uh, if they occur at the same time, uh, floods occurring at the same time, right? Uh, landslides occurred at the same time. Probably seawater intrusion or salinity occurs at all the same time. So can you integrate or can we integrate all these kind of hazards and apply this uh, CFD technique for the assessment purpose? Uh, I, I'm not very sure about landslides because mm, okay. that is, uh, we are dealing with solids there, but if we use three phase modeling, then probably we might be able to, we can explore more on that. But if there is right, right. going in from different directions, if we consider that as a hazard, like flooding, mm -hmm one side see uh, water intrusion from the other side then right, most right. done with cfd okay okay yeah thank you thank you uh, so good yeah. uh, thank you thank you professor sangha uh, i was just thinking about the same uh you know as uh so that was explaining i think maybe we just introduced uh multi-phases right so that, because you you mentioned there are multi-phases so maybe salinity will have a different renown and different density obviously and the landslide will be a flow of debris, which again will come in different density and different uh, renowns. So if that is uh, possible in a one domain, one single domain, then I think multi-hazard is possible. But of course, you know, computational will come, you know, how much you can simulate. <laughs> then I think we can uh, we can get help from Professor Sangha. You know, we have a supercomputer here. I think let's put it into good use then. <laughs> <laughs> that would be helpful actually to run the prepare the models in our personal computers and to the supercomputer and have the model run there. Yeah. Um, yes, so uh, thank you so much. And uh, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you, Professor Sangam, Dr. Tonin, and uh, for joining today's session. Uh,
Um, so uh, it's already 10, so uh, it's, our time is up. So again, I would like to say thank you for uh, Sogat for coming uh, to share your knowledge with us. We're lo looking forward to more opportunities to interact with you in the future. Uh, so with that, I would like to close uh, today's uh, seminar this week, uh, this month, today, uh, this month seminar, WEM seminar, and then we'll be welcoming you back uh, next month in exactly the same uh, February 2nd. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice day. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Long. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.